Despite a growing push to get first home buyers to think about sustainability, the average Australian house is getting bigger. A number of local councils are now asking whether their newest residents can afford the power bills that come with their big new houses. Margaret Paul reports. Fleur Pittman moved into her new eight and a half star home in the Geelong suburb of Belmont less than two months ago. It's just the comfort. It's just waking up in the morning in winter and the house is warm. Rather than spend on size, Fleur Pittman invested in features like reverse brick veneer, double glazing and LED lighting. She says all that will pay off when she gets her first power bill. So it's probably got a tenth of the heating requirement of the average Australian home. Fleur Pittman's home is part of a new housing boom around Geelong. More than 20,000 homes are being built in the new suburb of Armstrong Creek, which will house around 65,000 people and bigger is definitely not always better. People are, I suppose, going to the banks and borrowing as much money as they can to build the biggest homes that they can, and they're forgetting about the long-term ongoing running costs. The Geelong City Council is offering free consultations with an architect to remind people they can save money on power bills by building smaller, environmentally friendly homes. We find that the drive has to come from the consumer. Developers say they do discuss sustainability with customers when they're buying off the plan. The size is important but also uh, much more important is the orientation. New data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows Australian house sizes are growing steadily. In 2001 the average floor size was around 220 square metres. Last year it was nearly 250 square metres. One thing developers and architects do agree on is that the cheapest way to reduce energy bills is to make use of natural light. Margaret Paul, ABC News, Geelong.